rumor has it you've been warming up to the idea of Bitcoin as well. Is that true? Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people have gotten suckered into the Bitcoin sales pitch. Um, a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money in Bitcoin, unfortunately. I mean, a lot of people made a lot of money because they bought it years and years ago and they're selling it now. But, you know, just like Social Security, it's like any kind of Ponzi scheme. The people that started collecting Social Security in the 1940s, 1950s, yeah, they made, they made out like bandits. <laughs> but the people who are expecting to collect it now, right, especially like not the baby boomers, but, you know, Generation X, Y, Z, whatever it is, the millennials, uh, all they're doing is paying taxes. They're never going to collect any real money out of Social Security. So uh, the, the people who are buying Bitcoin now, they're just paying for the gains of the people that bought it years ago because they're, you're buying the Bitcoin that they're selling. But, you know, Bitcoin is, is not digital gold. I mean, first of all, look what happened last night. You know, we had the, uh, the missiles, you know, were dropping. People were panicking. And immediately the S&P sold off one and a half percent as soon as we got the news of, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the Israeli uh, retaliation against Iran. So the S&P futures immediately knee jerk or down one and a half percent. Gold immediately is up one and a half percent, made a record high of like uh, 2,415. What happened to Bitcoin? It dropped six percent. It dropped more than the stock market. So how it's not a safe haven. It's not a hedge. I mean, it's riskier than what people might be hedging. So it can't be digital gold if it's not a safe haven. But also it's not a store of value. So it's not an inflation hedge because Bitcoin doesn't actually have any value that you can store. I mean, it has a price, right? There's a market price for Bitcoin, but there's no underlying value uh, to support that price. There's just supply and demand to support it. But gold is an actual metal. It's a precious metal, a physical commodity, the most useful metal on the periodic table. And when you're storing gold, you're storing all the future use of that metal. Uh, people can use your gold in the future uh, to do all kinds of things. And so there will be demand. And when inflation makes the price of wheat go up and the price of oil go up and the price of pork bellies go up, you know, it makes the price of gold go up, right? All these commodities go up when there's inflation. But Bitcoin is not really a commodity, even though the CFTC, you know, says it's a commodity as opposed to a security, but it doesn't have a real use like any of the other commodities. All you can do with Bitcoin is send it to somebody else. That's the only use you have. You, you know, and it is very easy. I acknowledge that. It's very easy. Uh, but the reason it's so easy to send Bitcoin is because you're sending nothing. Sending nothing is a lot easier than sending something. Uh, so as long as you're willing to accept nothing, then great. Bitcoin is, is perfect. But the problem is eventually people don't want nothing. <laughs> They're going to want something. Uh, but, you know, as long as there's a fool willing to buy Bitcoin, there's a price and, and people can pretend that it's some kind of digital version of gold. But it's not. Digital gold is no more gold than digital food is food. Right. I can't eat digital food. Yes, I can. I can make an image on uh, a computer that looks just like a, you know, a ham sandwich. You know, but I can't take a bite out of it. It's not going to satisfy my hunger. In fact, if you have a diet of digital food, you'll die of starvation, right? So you can't substitute. You know, I was, I, I did some Bitcoin debate the other day and I, I you know, somebody put a comment or, and they tried to say, look, I don't get it, you know, that Bitcoin is the digital version of gold. Gold is analog and Bitcoin is digital. And one of the examples he used was photography. He said, we used to have, you know, film and now we have digital photography. And so this is the same thing. It's not the same thing, because when I have a digital photograph, I still have a picture, right? <laughs> you know, so, you know, if, if you want to get, take a picture of your kids, you can use a digital camera. You still get a picture. You don't need uh, film, right? You don't need an old school a Kodak film or a Polaroid. I can take a digital picture and still get, you know, a picture, a photograph. That's not the same thing. If I take digital gold, Bitcoin, rather. And I say, well, I'm going to use Bitcoin instead of digital gold. No, I don't get a medal. I can't make anything out of it. Look, I got a bracelet I'm wearing here, which is a 24 karat gold bracelet. I bought this at Monet. 
Mm. Uh, Monet.com, they're a great jewelry store. I love their stuff. Um, but you can't make this, this bracelet <laughs> out of Bitcoin. Uh, in fact, you can't make Bitcoin without gold because the gold is in the computer chips to conduct the electricity. Um, and, and, and so I can't put Bitcoin in a computer chip to conduct electricity. There won't be any electricity conducted, right? So you can't replace gold with Bitcoin. The way I can replace an old school camera with a digital camera or, you know, I have my music digitally. I don't have to have a record. Right? I can have digital music because I can still hear the sounds. I can still dance to the beat, right? So it still works. But digital gold doesn't do anything that real gold does, just like digital food doesn't do anything that real food does. So some things can work digitally and others can't. <laughs> and gold can't be replicated digitally. And so Bitcoin is not digital gold. It's fool's gold. So you still believe that Bitcoin is on its way down to zero uh, because it really has no value despite that ETFs are now coming in buying tons of Bitcoin. You have BlackRock buying Bitcoin and all that. It's still a worthless. Yeah, well, just first of all, BlackRock and all those big Wall Street firms aren't buying Bitcoin. Their customers are buying Bitcoin. They're just booking the bets. They've established these ETFs and they let their customers buy them if they want to. Wall Street will let you do any dumb thing as long as they can make a commission. <laughs> that's true. Right? I mean, so that's what's going on. They're just, they're just getting in on it. I, I don't think too many people at these big firms are buying for their own accounts, right? This is just the customer's accounts. But this is where all the buying has come from to drive Bitcoin up to 73, 74,000, whatever the high was. It was all the anticipation of the ETFs and then the initial flurry of buying that took place by the ETFs. But I think that's over. And I think the next big move is selling out of the ETFs because I think a lot of people rushed in uh, with the expectations of a moonshot, 100,000, 200,000 million, thought they're buying a safe haven, a store of value. Uh, I think once Bitcoin you know, breaks below 60,000, maybe below 50,000, I think a lot of the people that got in are going to try to get out. You know, I don't think these are long-term hodlers. These are not diehard true believers. They just jumped on a, a, a fad. They thought they could make a quick buck. Some of these people sold their gold ETFs or their gold stocks to, to take a shot at Bitcoin. And when it doesn't pan out, when it doesn't go the way they expect, I don't expect them to hodl you know, for their end of time. I think they'll cut their losses or take a small profit, depending on when they got in, and they'll move on. The problem is they're not going to be able to sell. The market will crash because there's no buying. Because in order for people to, when they sell their, their ETFs, the ETF has to take the Bitcoin and sell it into the market, which means there has to be a real buyer for those Bitcoin who's going to pay real dollars. You can't pay with Tether. I just don't think there'll be enough liquidity uh, to support you know, the redemptions. There, there, was, there was liquidity to support the purchases because, sure, there were plenty of people who wanted to unload their Bitcoin into the ETFs, but not that many of the, the whales who unloaded their coins are going to want to buy them back. I mean, not at these prices. They're getting maybe at much lower prices. They'll they'll take a shot at it again. But yeah, you know, I don't think that Bitcoin is going to go to zero anytime soon. But it can get pretty damn close. But I think there'll always be people. Not always, but at least in the foreseeable future, people will be willing to trade Bitcoin. I mean, if you could buy a Bitcoin for a dollar again, somebody will do it. So I don't know that it's going to go to zero. But I mean, I do think there'll be trading. Bankrupt companies trade, right? They trade for pennies, but they don't go to zero, even though they're inherently worthless. There's still people trading the shares. Um, so people could be trading Bitcoin for a while. So it may take a, a long time before it goes to zero, but it's going to feel like zero. I mean, if you lose 99% of your money, if Bitcoin, even if it goes to 100, even if it goes to 1,000, you know, if you bought it at 60, 70,000 and it goes to 1,000, it's going to feel like it went to zero, even if it didn't. Well, let's see what happens with Bitcoin, because a lot of people are obviously very hopeful with Bitcoin being a digital currency, and I know, you know you've been very adamant and vocal about your opinions on it, so I always appreciate that. If you enjoyed this clip and you wanna watch the entire conversation, all you gotta do is click that button right over there. And for those of you who wanna stay up to date on the top finance and business news, you can join Market Briefs, my free financial newsletter, by clicking that button below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.